So this program is going to show how easy we can pattern conversational blocks in a program. What I've done here is created a program using some conversational features that just gives me a frame, circle with an island, and a uh, bold circle. Then I went and chamfered those particular uh, features on the part. What I want to do is I want to assume that either this is one part in a group of 12 different parts or this is a feature on a larger part where there are 12 exact features. So what I want to do is I want to pattern all of the blocks in this particular program into a grid pattern. And the way I do that is simple. Right before the first block that I want to begin patterning, I'm going to insert a pattern block. When we look at our patterns, we have pattern locations, which gives me independent X and Y locations for every part, it gives me more control between them if they're not exactly the same distance apart. I can scale things larger or smaller, I can mirror image them. Or under loop, which is what we're going to do, I can do a loop rectangular, which will be a grid pattern like we're going to use. I can do a loop linear, saying a specific distance in X and Y each part is. I can do an angular or rotate them around a point. We're going to do a loop rectangular. Now, I said that I had f uh, 12 parts that I wanted to do. So that's going to give me four parts along the x-axis, three parts along the y-axis, and since that part's six inches, I'm going to make them seven inches apart in both directions. Now, If I look back at my review screen, beginning with block one, it's going to pattern every block after that until it sees a pattern end. I'm going to insert a pattern end. So in this case, all the blocks between blocks 1 and 9 will be patterned. However, if I just needed to pattern one or two of these blocks, I simply would put the pattern in block between two of the other blocks and can control where it starts and ends. But in this case, we're going to zoom out so we can see them here. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Here we see that... We've taken this particular program and patterned it. Let me turn on some more features so we can see them all here. You can see the holes, you can see the chamfers, you can see the pockets. So everything was patterned. We can also nest patterns. So let's say before I rectangled them, or I'm sorry, patterned them in that rectangle, I want to rotate them. Pattern, loop, rotate. I'm going to rotate them one time around the center of the part and I'm going to rotate them 45 degrees. For every pattern there has to be a pattern end so I'll go down here and put another pattern end and redraw this. Now you'll see that the features have all been rotated 45 degrees. And to show that we can continue to do nesting if necessary, I'm going to scale them, insert a pattern scale. I'm going to scale the X and the Y by half. I'm going to leave the Z depth alone. Again, three patterns. i got to have three pattern ends. So now you'll see that I have reduced the size of them by 50%, rotated them 45 degrees, and then patterned them so there's 12 of them on the table. We can do this with G-code programs as well. There will be a separate video showing how to do that. But this shows how easy and quick we can manipulate features on a part. This is very useful when you're, giving, you're given dimensions on a print that are in X and Y coordinates. However, that part or that feature is actually rotated on the actual part by a certain number of degrees. You can use this um, pattern features and rotate them to do that. 